Hi guys, it's Liz Scissors with Splitting Hairs. Today we're going to talk about some business advice. We're going to touch base on building your confidence, which is going to entail getting your skills and knowledge up and getting networking figured out and situated. And it's also going to be about being open to change and growth. We're also going to talk about setting boundaries and how important that is. And in that segment, we're going to be talking about how to decide what your boundaries should be and how to set them and why. And we're going to talk about when is it okay to move those boundaries as well as how to say no, because we know that's hard. All right, so let's get in it. When we're talking about building confidence, confidence, I say all the time, knowledge is power. Power equals confidence. So the only way, in my opinion, for you to gain confidence is to grow your knowledge base. When you have filled your pockets and your bags and your backpack, all of it filled with knowledge, you find peace with that. You're going to find calm with that because you have answers. There's no more unknown or there isn't as much unknown, I should say. So when you filled that bag of tricks, you're going to feel so much better about every decision you make because you know why you're making it. You're going to be able to answer questions because you know the whys to those answer to those questions. So when you're trying to grow that knowledge base, you have so many resources nowadays. We are all so incredibly lucky to live in this day and time where the resources are immense. So you're going to grab things like trade shows, webinars, seminars, all those things that are fantastic that you can pinpoint areas that maybe you have questions in or you're just not sure and your confidence isn't where it should be. You're also going to be pull, pulling from multiple sources because there are so many different ways to do the same thing. So when you have multiple sources giving you those answers and they're all very similar but slightly different, you can then make it up for yourself and say, I like that skill that way for me. It works best for me that way. But I also know from all of these other sources that I have reached out and filled my bag of knowledge on that I know that there's more than one way to do it. So if that doesn't work for me that time, maybe I can try another way because I have really done my homework and my research on getting that bag of skills really full. And so when you have that all taken care of, you're going to feel better about it. All of those questions that come from the clients, you're going to have resources in your, in your pockets that you pull from and you can answer those questions. Well, when you feel confident about answering those questions, your emotions calm down. And the best way to deal with customer service is having your emotions in check. If you are calm and cool and collected, you're going to come across as confident and knowledgeable and be better respected. There's not going to be so much second guessing. There's not going to be so much bullying. There's not going to be so much, oh, whatever, you're just a dog groomer. No, they're going to feel it because you exude that confidence because your knowledge is so vast. So it's super, super important for you to really make sure you are taking those classes, getting online, reading books, watching videos, Another huge resource out there, which I really, really recommend, is find yourself at least one mentor. I have multiple, multiple mentors that I have absolutely gained so much knowledge on skills, on psychology with clients, on how to handle situations, because I have built a relationship with someone who I trust and I respect and I value their ex expertise and their knowledge and I pull from them. So when I have a problem, I have somebody I can reach out to and that's super helpful in answering those questions when we come across those situations that are difficult and we come across stuff all the time that we're not prepared for. So the bigger our confidence is on the, all of those skills that we've grabbed and all that knowledge we've grabbed, the more likely it is we're going to be successful in those interactions with our clients and that's really important. So again, with confidence, you have to have the knowledge. If you are not secure in that knowledge, you will not exude confidence because you're not confident because you really have questions and you're not sure. So let's get rid of that by making sure you're doing your due diligence to get that knowledge in whatever area it is you need, whether it's business or it's marketing or it's actual grooming skill or it's staff interactions and all of those things in between 
grow those bag of tricks, man. They, it will help you tremendously. And you're gonna feel better about yourself and you're gonna walk into your business and go, I got this, it's all good. And that is a huge, huge, huge benefit when certainly if you're a business owner, it really, really will help you in dealing with everyone when you're hiring, when you're firing, all of those little things because you feel good because you know where you're at and you've got it, you've got it on lock. Then from there, you're gonna to want to also be open to networking. Networking is a fantastic way for you to grow your support system in your area as well as outside of your area. So Facebook is a fantastic way. I'm super, super grateful for Facebook. I use it all the time, as most of us do. So we wanna make sure that you are creating a Facebook page if there isn't one for your local area. If there is one, make sure you join and you stay fairly active and stay on there because somebody is sharing information. Someone is asking questions. It may have answers to questions you have that you didn't realize you wanted to know. There's so many things out there that they, it can be helpful for. But most importantly, networking is going to create a support system for you of people hopefully in your area that you can reach out and get help from. If you have a problem that arises and you have somebody who's two blocks away from you or couple miles down the road, it's incredibly helpful to know, man, if I get in a bind, I've got somebody I can ask a question to. Or if you need to share information, like you have a client that comes in that is off their rocker and you know they are an accident waiting to happen and they are a, a potential problem and that there's a groomer right down the road that you know she's probably gonna go and beat down her door. If you are friends with that groomer, you can give them a heads up and say, hey, I'm just letting you know my experience with this situation. Be careful so that they're prepared and just reaching out and having that camaraderie in your grooming community because we all have a hard job. Nobody understands a groomer like another groomer. So it is always a good idea to have other people in your pool to pull from that you can ask for help or they can ask for help. And we support each other because man, we all have something different to offer and we aren't competition for each other. We're not. If you have a skill set that they don't have, they have a skill set you don't have. Or maybe we're all very, very similar, but we all have our niche. There's enough dogs for all of us. There's no reason to be catty and competitive. We can absolutely help each other in this industry in a positive and supportive way. Get together some groomers dinners, gatherings that are fun, do a groomers garage sale, something fun where you get together and you get to know each other a bit. You don't have to be best friends, but let's support each other and be there as a resource for each other. And then finally, always be open to, to change. Always be open to growth. This is an ever-changing industry. There are so many amazing opportunities that are coming up where there are new, new products and new equipment and techniques and different skills that are coming up that, man, it's so fun to be able to learn new things. Find your passion for it. If you're gonna be a groomer, be the best groomer you can be. Make sure you're giving the best of yourself to your clientele. When you know that to your core, you're going to exude confidence and peace and authority. You're just going to because it's there. You feel good about it. So let's make sure we're always open to that because it can come from the most obscure place. Somebody gives you something and you go, holy moly, I, this groomer's barely been in here a minute and she just taught me something new. Be open to that because we all can be open to growth and change and be better people for it. So we are moving on to setting boundaries. I am the queen of setting boundaries. I love boundaries. Wanna know why I love boundaries? I love them because I have been walked all over for a very long time. When I first started out, our industry was not respected at all. So we were called names. I can tell you absolutely that I have been called every name you can think of over dog grooming. And as silly as it may seem to some of you newer groomers that you can't believe you would be treated that way, that is just how it was. We were lowly dog groomers. It was embarrassing to tell people what we did for a living because people did not value it. Well, thank God that has changed. We are now in an industry where people admire us a lot. Not everyone, we're still working on it, but it's changing and it's changing for the better because people value their animals, people value the skills that we offer and how big our hearts are that we wanna do this. So that means don't be a doormat. Do not be a doormat. Figure out who you are and what is okay with you. 
If you are okay with somebody getting loud with you, then you're okay with that. If you're not okay with somebody getting loud with you, then you're not okay with that. If you, in your mind, sit and have a conversation with yourself, be introspective. What, do, what am I okay with? What really bothers me? I hate it when clients do this. It bothers me to no end when they do that. Figure those things out and set your boundaries. And that means deciding, what is okay with me? Am I okay if they cross that line? No, I'm not okay with that. So that is a boundary and you stick with it. Say it's about your cancellation policies. Say it's about your how people talk to you or what is appropriate. Okay, figure it out for you and your salon. We're all different. My boundaries are not your boundaries. I've been walked on a lot, so I'm pretty strict and have been called some names about being pretty strict because I've seen it all, I've been called it all, I'm not having it anymore. Whereas other people have much thicker skin and they just go, oh, it's no big deal. It doesn't bother me. It does, and that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. So figure out who you are, what your boundaries are and what bothers you and what doesn't so you can figure out where your lanes are, draw that line in the sand, and that is a solid line. It doesn't move. That is it. Once you have that clear in your head and by building your confidence, you can make that line and you can feel good about it and go, nope, that's it. This is where I'm at. They are not allowed to crawl, walk all over me. I'm not going to let somebody convince me to change my boundary because they forgot they, this happened, that happened, whatever it is. If you have a strict boundary, you need to stick with that boundary and make sure it's a healthy boundary that makes sense for you and your staff and your salon and your life or your mobile, whatever it is. It's got to make sense for your business. It can't be unrealistic. But you can absolutely say, these are the rules. This is the rules and I'm the boss and I get to decide what they are and stick with them. Then be clear with those boundaries with your clientele, with your staff. This is what's allowed and this is what is not allowed. So everybody's on the same page. Once you've got your boundaries set, now we can move on to how do we deal with that? How do we deal with telling people no? That is a tough one. We are pleasers. We really like to make sure that everybody's happy. As much as we'd love to work with dogs, we are ultimately making people happy every day. We are customer service slaves. That's what we are. So we are going to make sure that we have a way of saying no that is still professional and still is clear, but is also positive. The word no is very negative. And in business, you want to say that word as little as possible. You don't want to say, no, I can't do that. No, 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 I'm busy. No, no, you don't want to do that. What you want to do is you want to say, I can do this. You want to switch gears. I can do this. I could do that for you. I'm not able to do this today for you, but I could do that for you. What I can do, and so you're gonna switch gears, and instead of saying the word no, you're saying no in a very positive way. You're saying yes to this, because you're not able to say yes to this. So it's a very different, and psychologically it's different with the customers. So if they come in and they say to you, hey, I would like to get my dog in today, and you don't have space for that dog, or you don't take dogs on the same day because your schedule doesn't allow. Instead of saying, no, <laughs> you're crazy. There's no way I can get your dog in today. I don't work like that. You flip the script on that and make it a positive interaction by saying, I, re I really can't accommodate you today. However, I could accommodate you on Thursday or my next opening is this, but I've got a cancellation list. I'd be happy to add you to that. And if anything changes in my schedule, I certainly can let you know. And they go, oh, okay, well, I understand. And they hopefully will book that appointment and get on the cancellation list. And it's a positive experience for that person. And you no longer have this negative connotation of all I do is tell people no, all I do is say no, or people get upset with me when I say no. So if you have a repeat offender who doesn't like to book ahead and they're frustrated that they don't get in when they want to get in, that's when you can be proactive and say, you know what, I noticed that you bring little Scruffy in here about every six weeks. I'm going to go ahead and pre-book your next appointment. If anything, we're going to put it in pencil or we're going to put it in the computer, it's, it's movable. But I want you to check your calendar and make sure that'll work for you because I know that you've been getting frustrated that I'm too busy when you wait to call me. So I'm going to go ahead and set you up for success and set that appointment up for you. And I'm going to give you a reminder for that. So that way, if anything comes up, you can always change it. But then Fluffy's guaranteed that spot and you don't have to worry about it. And I will tell you, when you do it right, those clients 
not only do they him and haw for a minute and they go okay and they'll get on board for a second when they get that reminder and they go oh that's right scruffy and fluffy looks terrible and he needs a grooming i'm so glad that i had that appointment and i didn't wait or they forgot that you did it and they call you a couple of days ahead and you go actually remember we booked you ahead you got a spot and they go oh my gosh that's that's right I, you did do that for me thank you and what you do is you grow and build from that and you next time you go i went ahead and did your next one or would you like me to do several out for you i can do the entire year however you want to do it but you have taken that always telling that person no and you fixed the problem because you've been proactive in seeing how often they bring their dog and you've let them know that you're super busy and the best way to deal with this is to go ahead and book them in advance so then everybody wins in that situation and you're not constantly saying no i can't no i can't no i can't no i can't so you change your terminology and change how you think about it turn those negatives into positives because they are positive you are doing something right if you are not able to get people in right away obviously that's fantastic and you've got to grow on that and build on that and that is only going to create more problems for people that don't plan ahead and so you have to tell them that and that's your job as the professional is to let them know how your salon works and that's part of communicating with them and saying hey here are my boundaries my boundaries are I don't have a lot of wiggle room in my schedule because I'm I have the best clients in the world and they go oh okay all right okay so when can you move those boundaries those boundaries that you've placed are solid boundaries. You are protecting yourself, you're protecting the client, you're protecting your staff. All of those things are super important and you definitely want to stick to your word and be predictable and have integrity You and, and do what you say you're gonna do. At the same time, we're human beings. Life happens. We don't want to be heartless and cold and unforgiving when it's not necessary. So we need to be flexible when it comes to our clients that have been supportive for years and they are fantastic people and they're reliable and they're responsible and something happened if something happens flex with them make sure that you they understand that you have a schedule they've been coming to you for years so make sure they understand that you value them by saying you know what it's okay we understand i hope everything's better i hope you, i hope you feel better or i hope the situation gets better whatever the circumstances are Make sure that you're flexing with them a bit and showing them how much you appreciate all of their support in your business by supporting them in their life and saying, hey, don't worry about me. I will be okay. I just want to make sure you're okay. And if it's a true emergency, it's a true emergency. Things happen. We have to understand that. Things are going to happen in our lives. And if we're flexible with them, they will be flexible with us. And we really need to value that relationship with them. If we value it, they will value it. So let's make sure that we are not cold hearted, but that doesn't mean we're the opposite extreme where we are a doormat. We don't want to be that. So you've got to find these case by case situations where we are making sure that we're making the right choices. If they're a new client, that's very, very different. Then you're going to have to really kind of feel out that information you're getting given by them and decide if it's going to work for your boundary or if it's not going to work for your boundary. But in general, just be a human being. Treat people how you want to be treated. If you wouldn't want somebody getting angry at you over something that you had no control over, don't be angry at them for the same thing. Be kind, be a human being, but don't be a doormat. Value yourself, take care of yourself, and the best way mentally to keep your sanity is to take care of yourself and make sure you're setting proper boundaries for yourself and your sanity. I don't wanna be run over by a Mack truck client. I don't, it doesn't feel good, it hurts. So let's not allow it. So we have our boundaries for that, but we're also decent people and we care about our clients and we appreciate them and value them. So let's treat them the same way. Let's value their time as well and let's value the fact that things happen, it happens. So in conclusion, we are gonna make sure that we are building our knowledge base so solid and firm that there's absolutely no way that we don't have the answers or that we don't have a way to get those answers because we do we have resources we have pools to pull from we have networking and we have our mentors and we have the classes that we've taken so and we're open to that so therefore we always are going to have the answer and in that having those answers you're going to find calm and peace with that and you are going to feel comfortable to answer the questions that they have and to give them information because you've got that knowledge base and you're going to feel super confident about your boundaries 
boundaries because you're going to take care of yourself because you are important and you need to value yourself and your body and your business and all of your clients so that if somebody comes in and they're being a bully and they're trying to push you around and make you do something that you know you can't do. No, I can't do that. And I'm not going to do that. And it's, it's really a very empowering situation when you feel that calm come over you and go, I know exactly how I'm going to deal with this situation because we all have those situations come up. So take care of yourselves, make sure you're taking care of your customers, but treat everybody how you want to be treated and you'll get, you'll get it back. It comes back to you. So thank you so much for your time. Again, I am Liz Scissors and this is Splitting Hairs. Mm -hmm.